be mini fish it's the 12th of november this is the day the lord has made so i've compiled a whole bunch of information regarding this michelangelo show that's coming to the new york metropolitan museum and there's so many roads we can get down here but i just want to touch on one thing first and foremost it's a very uh detailed article this particular show is not going to ever be seen again they are literally saying that that you will not see this anyone the likelihood of there being another show like this on its scale within the lifetime of anyone reading these words is slim so they're they're very much pushing it as a, a must see and it really caught my eye because they just had at the oculus that building that you could do an entire documentary on it's just weird okay um the final judgment they ran there for a month at the oculus and then they just moved it across the river to new jersey over to paramus which i haven't looked into any of this stuff but it's still it's interesting but we're being inundated in new york city with michelangelo and michelangelo was the dude the dude when it came to the vatican and the time period of the reformation this was michelangelo's lifetime in fact like from 5 15 17 up to i don't know maybe 1550 or so i don't know the exact of his career length but that was at the peak of his career this is where the time frame of the Reformation was the same as the Vatican and that whole Roman Catholic animal was being, you know, morphed into basically what we see today. I mean, the the Vatican, the St. Peter's wasn't even built. Michelangelo actually had part in engineering and building the Vatican, and he did all the artwork. And we see so much that he left in this artwork is ridiculous but i just wanted to look at this particular one right now and this is just a fragment of a piece he did called the crucifixion of saint peter in the pauline chapel okay and that is this mural right here and the reason this is important is because of the fashion that peter was crucified and we won't even get into why he was crucified. There is a very good read on this, and you can look at it or not. It's up to you. And it's called The Acts of Peter. You can find it in the Apocrypha. Hold on a second. Let me fix this. There we go. That drives me nuts. You can find it. Just punch this into your search engine. The Acts of Peter from the Apocryphal New Testament. Okay? And you'll find this. And this was written, who it was written by, it, it really, it tells you everything. I accept it as true. Now, I don't have to accept it as true, and neither do you, based solely on what we see in this image. Because what you're looking at here is essentially what Peter is talking about in this text here. And it goes through all of his, the whole episode leading up to his having to be killed, essentially. But if we look down here where, where he actually approaches the cross, okay, the hidden mystery of the cross, he speaks here of the mystery of mankind, the earth, how it came to be, the nature of man that cannot be separated from God. He goes on to talk about how when we were cast down, we fell, okay? When he was hanged up in the manner he desired, upside down, he began to say, Ye men unto whom it belongeth to hear, hearken to that which I shall declare unto you as I hang here. Learn ye the mystery of all nature and the beginning of all things. And this is, your, your salvation is not contingent on knowing this. However, knowing this 
just opens up your relationship and your understanding with the Father and with Jesus. I mean, it's just amazing stuff. But basically what he tells you, he's saying is, unless you turn the things of the right into those of the left, because this is what happened when we fell, okay? He also, see, he being pulled down, born, head down, who was also cast his first estate down upon the earth. He's talking about Satan. Established this whole disposition of things. What we see now, what we experience in the flesh, being hanged up as an image of the creation, wherein he made things of the right hand into things of the left hand. So it's a mirror of God, in a sense. It, and it's hard for me to articulate it, but that's why we continuously see all these numbers and these mirrored um, little scenarios that we are seeing everywhere. You're seeing the kingdom of heaven, but your eyes, your physical eyes, are seeing Satan's world. You're seeing his works in the flesh, and you're, you're communing with God in the spirit. See, it's a spiritual war in a flesh world. That's why people keep trying to fix things with flesh, with politics and with wars, and you, you can't fix a spiritual problem with physical things. You can't do it. But this mural is absolutely mind-blowing. First of all, he's buried upside down, just like he's, he's showing you the mystery of this world. And he puts in this mural we could talk about for hours look at this character here pointing up the shush look at the hand gestures of this particular character you got to look at the way these people are standing the things they're doing the what they're looking at uh, this female dark-skinned female who's built like a wrestler what is the story behind that all of this stuff you guys it's absolutely fascinating but the bottom line is this is this is telling us unless you turn things upside down he will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and that is just mind-blowing to me and i don't know what that means to any of you but to me it opened up a whole new world and a whole new relationship with god and, you know, we can go through this for hours, hours. Back in John there where he's telling, asking him, do you love me? <laughs> I mean, that's just crazy, man. It's just crazy. Your death will glorify God. Absolutely. Hallelujah. I hope this makes sense to you guys. I do. There's a ton more to this but you know I have to do it in these increments or else you know I just I get lost in the in the information you know what I mean but I'll link this image you really need to check it out and do some study if you really want to understand what I'm talking about and I'll link all this stuff too and uh, by the way yeah this museum is located literally it's pretty much the the caretaker I guess of Cleopatra's needle this wonderful obelisk perfectly and specifically placed here in New York City for a reason this is the representation of the birth of their God Satan Osiris Nimrod whatever you want to call it that's what this represents just like we see in DC where they're having their Burning Man festival there and just like we see in the beautiful St. Peter's Square, Vatican Rome. And these are not just ornaments. My goodness, folks. This, this, this video could go on and on and on. And I'm just going to stop it now because we'll, we can get into some of this uh, Lucifer's vain show little landmark Google Map pins that he slips in everywhere afterwards. But... This right here was the main focus of this video, was to show you that what you're seeing, a bunch of us are just, we are developing 
the eyes and the ears to see the truth of it all because we're in the spirit of Christ and hallelujah man if you don't know Jesus please seek him now please understand what you are what you're dealing with and the beauty of your eternal life if you know Christ so we'll talk to y'all later peace and grace to you many fish Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, 